and follow through. To properly draw and knock an arrow, you have to learn to handle it right. And that's by the knock. When we were learning to shoot, learning the finer points of handling arrows, drawing and shooting a bow, Howard insisted that we handle our arrows by the knock. That's where you control the arrow. The only time that we could handle an arrow anywhere else was if we were carrying an arrow, like going through rugged country if you had a broadhead arrow, or if you were evaluating the arrow, checking it for straightness or fracture, anything like that. Other than that, Howard would have us handle the arrow by the knock. The reason for that is, and I'm referring to using a back quiver, that's the way you ought to handle an arrow. Most bow hunters today place their arrow on the bow, pass it across the bow, over the string, draw it back to the string. That's a wasted motion, needless effort on your part. Another thing about modern bow hunters, the majority of them knock under the knocking point. In doing so, they have to do just what I demonstrated. I knock above. Howard Hill knocked above. Now, there's a reason for it. When you draw an arrow out of a back quiver, you come to your string, these fingers will trap the string. The knocking point catches the knock as it slides down. You rotate your hand, and you're in position to begin your draw. Now, watch. I'm going to do that again and emphasize all those points. You come out of your quiver. These fingers, I call it trapping the string. They work as a funnel. You come to the string with your knock. It slides down. The knocking point stops it. Rotate your hand and you're ready to begin your draw. I'm going to demonstrate that, and when you practice it, you should practice drawing and knocking without looking. At first, you'll have to cheat and look down. If you hold your bow and drop the string just a little, this limb up slightly, you'll be able to funnel that arrow to the knocking point in pretty good order. Now watch. Draw, knock, rotate my hand, I'm in position to shoot. Draw, knock, rotate, in position to shoot. Draw, knock, rotate, position to shoot. Draw, knock, rotate, you're in position to shoot. There's an important reason for being able to draw and knock arrows like I just demonstrated. Years ago, I was hunting in Utah after a long afternoon hunt, I came on two bucks about 60 yards downhill, one big buck standing looking away, the other one bedded under the edge of a fir tree. I got in position to shoot, and as I made my shot, I elevated a little too much, flat missed the first buck. He broke and ran downhill. The second buck broke to my left, and as he did, I drew, knocked an arrow, started my draw, swung around, and shot, and collected one of the biggest bucks of my bow hunting career. That second arrow and the ability to get it out of the quiver and on the string will pay off for you in hunting situations. It's so important to learn to control an arrow by the knot, because really that's where you control it. Most fellows today, when they draw an arrow, have a tendency to squeeze it, and in doing so, you'll squeeze it away from the bow. To do it right, you let the string roll as you draw with your fingers slightly forward. When you draw that way and the string rolls, it actually exerts pressure, which puts the arrow against your bow. Learn to draw it that way and roll it, and you have complete control. You don't have to use the finger out here except on rare occasions. If you'll practice that and learn to draw, letting the fingers come slightly forward and the string roll, you will have total control of the arrow from any shot. Now watch this next shot.
One more time. Now, this whole style must be synchronized and smooth. You don't draw fast and then come to anchor and hold. Keep an even rhythm all the way through. When we were first learning to shoot, Howard would actually have us count. One, two, three, four, shoot. If you'll practice this, you'll pick up speed. And the longer you work at it, the faster you'll become until you're finally fast. That's shooting for speed. Shooting for speed is essential in a lot of situations. I remember one time Howard said that in shooting at game, you can shoot more accurately by shooting fast than by taking your time. The biggest buck that I ever killed in my whole bow hunting career to date gave me less than three seconds to shoot. From the time he came into view and the time that I released my arrow, I had to step, kneel, draw, and shoot. And I made my shot, and one of my nicest trophies hangs on my living room wall. Speed shooting is essential in bull hunting. To sight properly, the most essential thing is in tilting your head and varying the cant of your bow. When you anchor at the corner of your mouth, as the hill style teaches, rather than under your chin, you cut the angle of deflection almost in half. By that I mean the line of sight from your eye to your arrow tip. When you cant the bow, you cut that even more. When you tilt the head as you begin your uh, shooting, that cuts that angle even more. The reason that we do this, so when you're shooting, let's say at 20 yards, and you have anchored at the corner of your mouth, tilted your head, and canted the bow, you cut the angle of deflection down so that instead of correcting, let's say, 8 or 10 inches, your correction is cut to maybe a third. So your amount of correction at any distance is not as great as it is when the bow is in a straight up and down position. There's some fellows who've taken me to task and said that Howard never varied the can of his bow, but I know better. I shot with him hundreds and hundreds of times. The closer you are to your target, especially shooting downhill, the more you would vary the can of your bow. Howard's style of shooting was called a secondary vision, peripheral vision. Some call it gap shooting. It's not point of aim. When you do this style of shooting, you concentrate on the spot you're shooting at. And in your peripheral or secondary vision, you know where that knuckle point of the arrow, whatever you'll use as a reference point, wherever that is in line to the spot you're shooting at. A friend of mine up in Montana a few years ago came to me and he said, I'm having a little trouble shooting a bear out of a tree stand. He gave me a few particulars and I said to him, now I can tell you how you're missing and then I can tell you why. And he got a little bit of a grin on his face and he said, all right, I'm, I'm ready to hear it. I said, you're shooting down out of that tree stand and you're shooting high and left. He nodded his head and he said, well, you got the first part right. And I said, all right, I'm going to tell you why. I said, shooting your normal style with the bow straight up and down, and you're trying to shoot down at that bear, you can't possibly correct enough in that position out of that tree stand, and therefore you're shooting high and left. I said, now, the next time that bear comes in or the next time